My name is Travis Fulton. Uh, I've been a martial arts fighter for about 23 years. I can figure that one out. Uh, I know these YouTube videos are uh, pretty popular. I was kind of given this idea uh, based off of uh, girlfriend's enjoyment of watching people eat, which sounds disgusting to me. So if uh, you tell stories about nothing while shoving food in your mouth, I figure I can tell stories about something while sitting in a room by myself. So here I am, I suppose. Um, I mean, if you are a mixed martial arts fan, you're going to know my name, at least. Uh, most of today's fans are, uh, you know, they're from this new era, ever since the UFC became mainstream, and uh, you can watch it on TV, and it's readily available, and you see it everywhere, and it's accepted, so, uh, while I don't even know the names of a lot of the currently popular guys, I couldn't tell you one UFC champion. Uh, did win the... No, I say. Yeah, did he win the belt back? That's how clear I am on this shit, so I don't even know. Uh, I don't follow it. Um, some fights interest me, but that's about it. Um, I would be a good analyst, uh, per se, because I used to be such a fan of the sport, but that's not boring. So... I figured, uh, what the hell, I'll sit here and I'll tell you stories, see if anybody enjoys listening to them. If they do, maybe I'll tell you more. I have had so many fights, I could come up with an endless amount of stories. Not come up with a fight. I don't know what else to share. Um, for those who may not even know, and I have to actually write this down to, to tell you my record, I have 251 wins. 48 losses and 7 draws with one no contest in mixed martial arts. I have a professional boxing record of 25 wins, 49 losses, and 2 draws. So I suck at boxing. I have a professional kickboxing record of 11 wins and no losses, but I never fought a job. Kickboxing sucks. You never pay anything. And I have a bare knuckle boxing record of 0 and 1, but you know, I'm thinking. That's something I might want to try next, which might be stupid. I'm sure I'll break one of my brittle little hands. I have a pancreas record of two wins, three losses, and one draw, and most of today's modern fans are going to have no idea what pancreas is. Um, it, I don't count it on the mixed martial arts record. Um, it produced like people like Boss Rubin. Most fans are going to know who Boss Rubin is. And I... Uh, like you, you can only open hand strike, and if I can only slap you, you really uh, take away a lot of what I can do. And actually, a couple of my losses in hand trace were against guys that I really believe I would have beat and then make that if I could punch them. But, whatever. Sounds like an excuse. So, if you're doing the math here, I mean, I've had 308 professional MMA fights, and altogether I've had 402 MMA fights. And, uh, in fact, I can sit here and operate this camera, probably, uh, and I, I think speak coherently enough, I find the word coherent. Uh, it should be amazing to some people. So those who do know who don't know, it doesn't matter, I guess. Uh, I'm called the Iron Man. It wasn't a nickname that I picked for myself, uh, as many MMA fighters have picked on nicknames. Uh, Back in the day, it was Stone Hands, Turbo. I mean, don't even give me on the Turbo thing. Uh, I don't remember the other ones. They were stupid. And what actually had happened was I was competing in an organization called the IFC, the International Fighting Championship. And the IFC rivaled uh, the UFC at one point, a very short time period. And this was on their, you know, on the way out. And, uh, one of the commentators referred to me as the Iron Man of MMA. And it was in 1998, and at that time I had 40 or 50 fights already, which was unheard of. It was by far the most fights they had in the world, even at that time. I mean, I've always been a front runner in that. And uh, they, he called me the Iron Man and referenced, like, basically Lou Gehrig, who's Iron Man in baseball. 
uh, and played her many innings, like how we're kidding. And same thing with me, I was Iron Man of MMA, I didn't get hurt. And uh, it was a durability that is just a genetic trait. I, you know, I've never thought about it. I heal quickly, I don't get hurt very often. And if I do get hurt, like I said, I, I heal quickly. Um, the injuries I had trouble healing from weren't quite related. I had some softball related injuries that could have been a deal. Maybe someday I'll tell you those stupid stories. I don't know. It depends on how many of you care enough to watch this. I'm not going to post shit. On YouTube, I get 60 views. Probably don't like it. 50 views. Who knows? Um, I really, I mean, I could go forever. I figured I'd just go down the line. Uh, with some of the stuff that I, I get into when I'm on here. I'm not going to rattle off something that happened two years ago and then jump back to the 90s. Um, so I just, I figured maybe I'll go in chronological order and if I uh, generate enough interest in this, then you'll hear more from me. If you don't, you might have seen this video and you might record it again. You believe it because, ouch, my ego. Some of us. Uh, according to the internet, the celebrity I'm worth, I have been worth anywhere from, you know, I think it's like right now it's like 2.9 million or 1.9 million. And I've seen as high as 16 million dollars. And even it's at 2.9 million dollars or about 2.9 million dollars. So there was no money in MMA when I began fighting, and uh, I never even really got those good paydays. I, I had some good paydays, but never big ones. And uh, I was always in the right place at the wrong time. I mean, I fought in the big shows, I fought big name guys, I beat big name guys, but I just was never there at the right time. I, uh, I fought in a big show before it became big, or when it was sort of on its decline, or I fought a big name guy uh, before he became big or when he lost the car. I never fought in that big show during its heyday against a really tough guy and beat him. So, I mean, I'm, I'm well aware of where I stand as far as MMA is concerned. Um, boxing always takes over really well. And that's even, I cross over into boxing for fun. You know, I, I had no, I had a couple amateur fights, but nothing really. I had no real formal boxing training, and uh, I had, you know, it just crossed over just for the hell of it, and then got over a couple of fights, and uh, they paid so much more than MMA fights did, and I believe that they paid this well because they knew who I was, it's, you know, you know me from MMA, and I'd show up there, and I'd mention UFC or MMA, and they uh, had no idea what the fuck I was talking about. And what it turned out was I was a heavyweight with a winning record, and that's what they heard about. And to give you an idea of, I mean, the differential pay scale between MMA and boxing is obvious from the bottom level to the top. Um, I mean, just throwing this out there is what, like, uh, um, last MMA heavyweight title fight, I think I got like 200 or 300 grand, and the last professional boxing is really kind of idea, like 20 million. So uh, it trickles downhill. You know, I was getting paid boxing purses that were equal to what like, main event fights I can get in MMA or even not even that much. So uh, that was why boxing appealed to me. And I just had this thing, I couldn't turn out the fight. I always just felt like if I was asked to fight and I shot it down, I just felt like I was a bitch. And uh, that's stupid. But that's what I did. And, uh, you know, I never trained uh, to way I should. And, I mean, that's not an excuse. I mean, I, I mean, my career is a huge disappointment. To me, maybe, I mean, yeah, I'm that guy with got a million fights. But I got a million fights against 990,000 nobodies. So there's a few guys, but they're buried in there. And I mean, I picked up some big wins, I had lots of big losses, but and occasionally you know, I lost it all day. depends on what day of the week it was, I guess. But, uh, I just, uh, I mean, I, I didn't get into MMA because I was going to do that for a living. 
the biggest problem I had was when I did it for a living. Uh, for, when I first began, it was just fun. I was a big fan of the sport. And it was once I did it as a job that I took fights I shouldn't have. I fought injured. Um, didn't go to the gym like I should have. Uh, certainly never trained like I should have. Ironically, throughout my entire career, the only time that I trained like I should have was in 2007. I got in the best shape of my life. But, um, it's a mental game. And while I was like, in physically the best condition I could ever be in, mentally I, I didn't, I wasn't hungry anymore. I didn't give a shit. And uh, I lost a few of my fights that, that year. And um, I mean, big name guys, the former Bellator champion, and uh, named Attila Big, I thought I said it wrong. And against a guy who's currently fighting in the UFC named uh, Sergei Spivak. And I fought Attila in Slovakia and I fought Sergei in Ukraine. But I mean, I just, you know, I mean, I was a main guy from the other boys' fight. Uh, I was in great shape, but I just, mentally, I just wasn't right. And I knew it, but whatever. I was more concerned about getting hurt than I thought. Um, but for years, like especially in the 90s, I just loved the sport so much that I would go out there and just pummel guys who did train their ass off, and I had that train. And, but I mean, it wasn't good shape. I could go fight a 30 minute fight, and I could get winded, I could go do battles. I mean, I was in shape as I fought all the time, and I didn't get hurt. So it was just. You know, mentality and durability. It wasn't conditioning. Um, I mean, I've seen guys who were in amazing shape and go out there and gas out. And, just, you know, and you can take those gym fighters who are amazing in the gym and you get punched in the face once and it can change the game. Uh, I mean, I've seen gym fighters gain in every sport. You know, you got plenty of game day athletes and you've got plenty of guys who are amazing in practice, but they just don't perform on it. And fortunately, I was a guy who performed on game day. Um, but, I mean, that was why I just had so many fights for being a huge fan of that. And that, that was what it broke down to. I, my only goal was to fight in the UFC, and I accomplished that within three years. And then I just went downhill from there. I, I got fat. I took fights I shouldn't have. And still pulled off wins. That's what's messed up. And I beat some big name guys. Uh, while I was at my fattest. So, uh, you know, that's how it goes, I guess. I was just a naturally tough guy. Uh, I watch those little videos now and it makes me want to puke. Uh, I don't know how anybody found me attractive. I look like a big headed, fat, pregnant woman who was bald. That's what I look like. Very attractive. Um, but in 1998, I had an insane amount of fights, and it was mainly because of tournaments. Uh, tournaments were big back then, and almost every event consisted of a tournament. The UFC was tournaments, and uh, um, you know, it was just a way to get the, uh, you know, there weren't a huge surplus of fighters like there today. One of uh, my most well-known fights uh, was from 1998, I took on a Taekwondo stylist by the name of Jeremy Bullock. And, you know, back in those days, uh, you know, it's called mixed martial arts because it originally did pit one martial art against another. Most guys didn't cross train. So, you know, somebody came up with a style of karate was a karate stylist. Somebody came up with a style of wrestling was a wrestler. And, uh, I mean, they no longer do that, obviously. And I'm only putting this in here for any recent UFC fans who would have no idea what the hell mixed martial arts even stands for or why I had to point out that I was a taekwondo stylist. Um, it was a fight against a guy named Jeremy Bullock that took place in Utah in November of 1998. And it's just well known there was a weight difference, the big one, about 30 pounds, uh, which in heavyweights isn't unheard of, but, you know, I was 200 pounds, he's 170. That's unheard of these days. It wasn't, very, it wasn't common back then. And uh, I was being nice, and uh, it didn't end nicely for him. So I suppose maybe I'll just let you watch the fight and 
go from there. This fight even happened as uh, um, the stars aligned to get Jeremy Bullock severely hurt. I guess I don't know. Um, I had been in Brazil for a few weeks. Um, I flew to Brazil and I fought, and then we stayed in Brazil. I was with two other UFC veterans, uh, a fighter by the name of Felix Lee Mitchell out of Tennessee, and a fighter named Joel Sutton out of Buffalo, New York. And, uh, you know, both, I don't know which UFCs they fought in. I know Felix Lee Mitchell fought Ken Shamrock in UFC 3. I think Joel Sutton went undefeated in the UFC. It was like 2-0. and um, I'm sure most people have no idea who these guys are. But they were older than me. I was 21, and the entire time they were visible. I mean, these people had lives back home. They had families, wives, whatever. I was 21. It was a fucking party. I didn't even care. And uh, I didn't want to fight. And I'm in Brazil, and where better to be. And uh, we flew from Recife, Brazil to Salvador, Brazil, which is about an hour-long flight. And I won an eight-man tournament, the World Dojo Fighting Championships Part 6. And, uh, you know, here's some clips of that tournament. I a good chance of winning this whole tournament. Well, I don't know, Alex looks pretty... Uh he looks pretty spry, he's light, he's coming out with some punches. Punches. And classic uh, double leg takedown. Travis is going for the takedown. Yeah. But uh, he's uh, got it. He's trying to get uh, He's leading with his box. He's got some nice boxes. He's still worked for a wrestler. He's got some good moves. He's going to fall and shoot him trying to do a double leg takedown. Well, he and, did. Yeah, that's correct. And the wrestler uh, is showing a great sign of uh, ground control skills. Well, now he's got one leg, but it's doing heel kicks to the head, but Pereira did a great job of uh, doing that thing here. He looks a little slight, though. He may not have the body weight. That's going to hurt him. I mean, now generally, I just don't want to hear my guy with a guy with a finisher at this point. Choke him out already or put him in a position That's my where maybe I'm a little biased. Yeah, well, yeah, Travis is, is, is choosing to punish Louis Claus instead of trying to apply. And, uh, I mean, it was it was hardcore stuff. It was real deal, no old bar, no time limits. It was bare knuckle. Um, and you do everything except for bite and eye gouge. Uh, headbutts, everything was legal. And growing shots, I mean, it was what it was. Um... You know, I was just happy I won. And originally, I was supposed to fly back home from Brazil, and I was going to be in Iowa for two or three days before flying off to Utah to fight. And uh, instead of flying us from Salvador back to Recife, which is now a long flight, uh, they stuck us in a cab. And we left after the event and drove through the night in the backwoods of Brazil, and I have no idea how we made it there. Uh, I know it took a long time, and from what I remember, the back roads were awful. Holes and uh, arm checkpoints, I don't know. Our cab driver fell asleep a couple times. We probably should be dead. Um, and actually, when we got back to Recife, we, uh, we missed our flight. And uh, it took a couple days to get another flight back to the U.S. And the only thing I cared about was, like, oh, i got to make this fight in Utah. And, you know, this was before, you know, Facebook and, you know, international cell phones and stuff like that, so I had no way of letting the promoter uh, know that I might not be there. And um, what had happened was I got into Miami, it was the day of the event, um, and this is before 9-11, so you can kind of do what you wanted in airports back then. And 
And uh, I just said, hey, I'm supposed to be on this flight. And, oh, yeah, we'll order out you. And they, they did. They stuck me on a flight to Utah. No questions asked. Uh, landed about 5 o'clock p.m. the night of the fight. Um, saw a reporter that I knew there. And uh, he asked if I wanted to go eat. And, you know, I was, I was supposed to be 200 pounds and under. I was usually around there. And in those days, there weren't official lands. There, there weren't athletic commissions. Somebody cared. And I knew the promoter well, and I knew I was close enough, so who cared? And we went and ate, and then I went and did my uh, my interview. And as you saw in the clip earlier, um, you know, I say I'm, I'm fighting in the, the tournament because I was supposed to. And uh, one of the other fighters in the tournament made a big deal about how he wanted to see me make weight. He doesn't believe I'm under 200 pounds. And he got everybody riled up in the tournament uh, to see me make weight. He wasn't even my first round opponent. And I was 202 pounds. And originally my opponent didn't care, but he got my opponent's camp pissed off about it. I'm hurt already anyways. Uh, the event starts in an hour, not even an hour. I ran some laps or whatever. I lost half a pound. I'm like, well, fuck it. I'm not fighting. And then this idiot comes up to me afterwards and, it, you know, tells me, he's like, yeah, there was no way to get you out of the tournament. I, I knew you'd be the man to beat. I didn't want to think I'd beat in like a minute, so way to go dickhead. Um... So I actually didn't even plan to fight. And the promoter uh, said, well, we got this, you know, local taekwondo instructor who's been bugging the hell out of stop fighting. And they took his opponent and put his opponent in the tournament. And his opponent would have killed him. I know the guy. I mean, he, you told him be nice. There's no nice in this guy. And uh, he weighed about 190 pounds. They put him in the tournament. And uh, I went with the promoter back to ask if the guy would fight me. And, I mean, no shit he's doing that. John claude Van Damme splits on the two chairs, meditating. And the promoter asks if he'll fight me, and he's, oh, my self, you need to fight anybody any size. And, uh, you know, he laughed. We knew who he was. And he asked me to be nice, you know, don't, don't kill this fucking idiot. And uh, I wasn't going to. But the event was, uh, it was where the Utah Jazz play basketball. It's a big, big arena. And uh, it was packed. There was 10,000 people there, maybe. And I knew I couldn't hit him. I mean, the guy runs out, and he just jumps right over me. And it's just stupid. And uh, I knew he sucked. And take to the ground, it would be a fight. He didn't stand up out there to a fight. And I shot at him. He was just so weak. And I got side mount. And I just saw him locked in that headlock. And uh, I open hand punched him. And... I even told him, I'm like, uh, you're not going to get anything with that. You should probably let it go. And he said, oh. <laughs> what I figured I'd do was I would slam this guy. You know, slams don't, they look good. They don't typically hurt. And uh, slam them, then, you know, crowd usually goes crazy or something like that, and I'll harm him. I'm just trying to put on a show. And I picked him up, and he held on. And, yeah, you saw what happened. I knew he was hurt right away. The guy screamed like he's dying. I don't know. I mean, I felt bad. It was whatever, you know. Uh, <laughs> the promoter even tells me, I'm go see if he's okay. And I'm like, well, whatever. Um, and then I fought in Salt Lake City again six months later against uh, Heath Heron. And if uh, a lot of my fans do know him, I mean, Heath was a, I think he was a pride champion. From the UFC, from Brock Lesnar in the UFC. He was a, he was a tough guy. And uh, I beat Heath by a decision. And while I was walking back to the locker room, there comes up this guy in a big cowboy hat and a belt buckle, and he's like, remember me? And uh, I'm like, no. And he tells me, he's like, uh, I want a rematch. <laughs> All right, dude. Because, I mean, by this time, I have actually moved up to heavyweight. I was about 230 pounds, 225, 230. And I fought in the UFC just recently. And uh, I'm like, yeah, whatever. And he was like, but I'm, I'm first going to kick that Frank Shamrock's ass. And at this time, Frank Shamrock was the best middleweight in the world. And I knew right then and there that we would not be fighting because there was no way he was going to be kicking Frank's ass. And I don't believe that that guy ever even fought again. And uh, But he did message me on the fan page that I don't run. I had a message relayed to me. And although it says his name on there, he announced himself and said he's sick of people talking shit and wants the rematch. 21 years later, he wants a rematch. Hmm. Nah, I don't know. 
there's a lot of a lot of hype around that. I mean, so many people would probably care. That's stupid. But that's the story behind that one. And, you know, if this goes over well and people like it, I've got a ton of stories because people are stupid and I know stupid people. And hopefully they're entertaining enough for you.